Good evening and welcome to the McConnellsburg United Presbyterian Church's longest night worship service. Tonight we enter into God's presence to make space for grief, pain, or sorrow. We know that Advent can be a season of immense joy. Advent can be a season of laughter, hope, and loved ones gathered together. Advent can be a season of light, fireplaces and candles in the windows. However, many of us also know that Advent can be a season of pain. Advent can be a month-long walk down memory lane that leaves us aching, a series of traditions that just don't fit anymore. Thus, tonight, we are together in God's presence to carve out sacred space, space for grief, space for memories to run free, and space to remember loved ones. This year, unlike any other year, we carve out space to remember the suffering of the COVID-19 pandemic. Plans changed. Ceremonies canceled, relationships strained, and loved ones lost or absent. We bring them with us into God's presence tonight. Together, wherever we are, we testify to the darkness of the tomb and the darkness of the womb, believing that God is with us, not only in the light, but also through our longest nights. I invite you in, into God's presence, bringing all that you are, your anger, your doubts, your sorrow, your hope, your prayers, and your memories. Bring them all and simply let them be, for we are in the presence of God. Let us worship. Family of God, there are moments in worship when we are brutally honest with God. And the prayer of confession is one of those moments. Whether or not these words feel fitting for you on this day, we voice them together, knowing that at some point or another, we all could benefit from saying them. Please join me in praying the responsive prayer of confession as it comes up on your screen. God of connection and love, I confess. There are people singing tonight, but my heart is too heavy for singing. God of my heart and my mind, I confess. I know that I need you but it's hard to let you in. Grief builds walls where love had once been. 
God of the here and now, I confess. There is guilt that I carry and memories to bury, but forgiving myself seems necessary. God of my prayers and my dreams, I confess. This path of grief is miserably hard, bringing out the worst in me. Forgive me when I get it wrong. Love me back to grace and peace. Amen. Siblings in Christ, tonight is not the night to get hung up on things. We release things to be with God so that we can truly be in God's presence. Thankfully, we know that we are forgiven. Through Jesus, we can let things go, even now, on our longest night. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. Amen. Let us pray. God, we come to you with honest words and cries of lament. We trust that in this space our grief is safe with you. Speak to us through your scripture so that we might be able to draw even closer to your holy presence, witnessing your faithfulness through the ages. Gratefully we pray. Amen. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep. He was in the beginning with God. God said, let there be light, and there was light. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. And God saw that the light was good. God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not overcome it. But when I looked for light, darkness came. My inward parts are in turmoil and are never still. Days of affliction come to meet me. I go about in sunless gloom. I stand up in the assembly and cry for help. My skin turns black and falls from me. And my bones burn with heat. My lyre is turned to mourning. And my pipe to the voice of those who in weep. The darkness. Where can I go? In the darkness. Where can I go? In the darkness. Where can I go to be in your presence? If you are the light and I am in darkness, where can I go? The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not overcome it. If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, I looked for light and darkness came, you respond, and together, 
we say, even, even the, in darkness the darkness is, is not, not dark, dark to you. you. The night is as bright as day, for darkness is as light to you. Traditionally, the Advent wreath is used to mark the Sundays until Christmas with gradually increasing light. Each week, a new flame is lit to represent light banishing darkness. The light of hope, the glow of peace, the ray of joy, 
in the flame of love. All centered around a candle that will soon be lit on Christmas when Christ is born. Traditionally, the Advent wreath matches our mood, light growing within us as we wait with anticipation for the coming of our Savior on Christmas. Each week, the light is metaphorically passed from the wreath to each one of us as we banish the darkness within ourselves and prepare the way of the Lord, the way of hope, the path of peace, the journey of joy, and the destination is love, the love of Christ Jesus on Christmas. But this year it has been harder to banish darkness. We have lit the candles, we have sung the songs, and we have prayed our prayers, but hope, peace, joy, and even love seem to flicker like a dying flame. And there, from within the darkness, we miss out on Christmas, or at least that's the way it feels. This year, we lean into the darkness because in it, we will find what we need. Yes, today we give thanks for darkness, for the darkness of not knowing. There is so much we can never understand. There are so many questions we are afraid to ask. Let us not be afraid of the darkness of mystery, the beautiful darkness of the universe that births the stars, the darkness of the womb as life prepares to be born, the dark winter that must exist for there to be a spring, the darkness that births hope. Today we give thanks for darkness, for the darkness of sleep. There is so much that overwhelms us. We are thankful for the gift of rest and healing. To truly rest, we need dark. In the darkness of sleep, our bodies and brains heal. In this time of high anxiety, in these days of stress and worry, we give thanks for the peace and healing of darkness. Today we give thanks for darkness, for the darkness of the longest night. There is so much beauty we can only find in the nighttime. The fireflies, the owls, the crickets, the stars, the animals that are perfectly adapted to weather the cold. Homes that gl glow with light pouring out onto the street. We give thanks for the beauty and joy to be found only in the dark. May we be blessed by darkness's joy. Today we give thanks for darkness, for the darkness of creation. There was only chaos before our God spoke. There was only darkness. But there, from within the darkness, God decided to create us, to create messy people who would grow and die, who would succeed and fail, who would love and hate. God created us from darkness, deep Deep darkness, but also deep, deep love. We give thanks for the love created from darkness. This year, while sitting by the flickering flame, we realize that darkness is as important as light. Just as the cold dark of winter is as important to life as the bright warmth of summer, so darkness, too, is hope. It is peace. 
It is joy and it is love. And from within the darkness, we watch so closely for the light of Christ. Let us pray. God of creation, you gave us love. Thus tonight, as our hearts hurt due to grief, tangible and intangible, we ask that you give us comfort. Flood our minds with memories of love and with gratitude for all of those moments. And as we wade through this Christmas season, Help us to catch glimpses of you in the midst of our heartache. God of light and hope, give us peace instead of resentment. 
Give us you instead of the mere thought of you. And if you can, give it to us sooner rather than later. Gratefully, we pray. Amen. Hear the good news that Paul proclaims in Romans chapter 8. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or wickedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, or nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Family of God, tonight we are in God's presence. We know that Advent can be a season of immense joy. However, many of us also know that Advent can be a season of pain. We have remembered our grief. We have acknowledged it, named it, and placed it before God. To close this evening, we metaphorically once again carry the light from the Advent wreath to rest amidst our sorrows. For we trust that one day we will all be reunited in God's promised land, and there will be no more tears. We trust that God is present even in the darkest of times, on our longest nights. We trust that neither life nor death, nor things present nor things to come, can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Go now in peace, trusting that you are loved, you are known, and you are not alone. Amen.